lightning. So lightning is a major animal to take them out of. <laughs> this is a two-year-old bison. He's minimally fistulated, the fistula's on the other side. He was part of a diet study I had. I had four animals uh, that we were doing diet studies on, minimally fistulated them, and uh, they were not tamed down at all. They were wild as all get out. And uh, the first week or two of the study, one animal killed himself by jumping around so much he broke his back. And then a couple weeks later, this guy got popped by lightning. This was Lucky Strike <laughs> because he got popped and he lived, he lived 10 months after he got popped. And the, 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 really the good thing about this was, was that after he got popped, you could walk up to him. <laughs> you, could, you could scratch his head and he would just sit there and say, I don't know what you did to me, but don't do it again. <laughs> But, so, so, so that, that, that lightning really had a good effect on taking him down. But he sat for me, ended up dying. And, and after, he, after he got popped, I said, you know, somebody's trying to tell me that I shouldn't be doing this study. And so we abandoned the study, losing uh, half of the bison uh, immediately. Animals get injured uh, in Roundup 2, as I mentioned earlier. If one of these animals, from the time that they'll calves, develop a pecking order, and the ones that are on the bottom of the pecking order are the ones that get beat up if they try and make any big deal about uh, infringing on anybody's territory. Um, and this gal is obviously near the bottom of the pecking order. We do not do anything to the animals that get injured. We can't. We can't get out there and call a vet and say, Fix them up. So they're on their own. Now what we will do, if they are really seriously injured, displaced hip, punctured lumen, punctured lungs, uh, <coughs> guts hanging out, we will put them down. But other than that, they're on their own. And it's really remarkable the recovery pallets, pallets these guys and gals have. When we got those green animals, we had one dominant female and one dominant male in the group. And the dominant female was one which you did not want to look behind you and see her coming towards you. Because she had horns that stuck straight out. And they were sharp, just sharp as all get out. They were not like that. They were sharp horns. And she was a bitty. She had an attitude problem. And we don't we didn't want to deal with attitude in our bison. And so when we brought her back, uh, this was out of Missouri when we, when we picked the animals up. We put them up uh, in, a, uh, in a container with uh, the dominant bull because we figured they would at least get along a little bit better if the dominant bull and the dominant female were together. She infringed upon his territory, though, on the body back. And when we unloaded them on Kanza, she had a gash that was wider than this all up down her legs. And you look at her and say, there's no way. There's no way she's going to live. So we had the vets out uh, looking at the animals anyway, and he said, I ain't going to sew her up. <laughs> I'm going to waste the bread on her. <laughs> and we kept her in the corral for two month, uh, three months, so we sold her at Salina. So she had three months to heal. At the end, and by the time we sold her in March, she was pretty well healed up. She walked with a limp, and she had a a different attitude. She wasn't nearly as mean as she had been. So it's kind of a shame to sell her by then, but we'd already made the decision. But animals get injured and uh, they're on their own. Sometimes, sometimes we have to uh, say, well, you make do. This, this is tripod. <laughs> he, he could run too. He could run as good once he learned how to balance himself. He could keep up with the hood when the hood started stamping off. But uh, Tripod stayed around for a while until he didn't make the cut. So to balance out the deaths, we're going to get all back. To, we're going to tie this all in with Wendell Hill in a minute. To balance the deaths out, we, we want to, I'm going to talk a little bit about the boats because this ties really close in with weather. This is charged, but this is great. This is from a year ago. 
Okay, a calf crop percent, average calf crop percent for all, a hood, 65%. And if you look at it, say, well, some years you had really good year of calves, and the next cock eye year, really bad year. So the things going on on why these animals are treated the same, we don't do anything to them, we don't feed them, we don't do nothing. But there's a tremendous variation of calf crop from year to year. 65% if you was in the business, you'd be out of business. It's, you don't want a 65% calf crop. We're not in the calf crop business, so, so we can be in the coping with it. Well, let's look at the calf weights. Long-term weight, just for ease of, of telling people I, that I tell it, you can figure an average male calf when they're six months old to round up to be about three and a quarter, and the average female to be about 300 pounds. And as you can see, it fluctuates widely from year to year. And it, look at 2004, our worst year ever for calf weights. And there was one remarkable thing about 2004. And that was the year of the gigantic biomass production. That was when you could go out in a prairie and biomass was over your head. Two years later, best calf crops we ever had. Biomass production, extremely low. Both of those years. So there's obviously a relationship between going on between grass and not the quantity of grass, but the quality of grass. And the the animal performance well, almost lost my balance. <laughs> I may need that stool you off. <laughs> so let's uh, let's look at a few of the factors that uh, that affect the, these calf weights. And the most important one <coughs> The, the most important when that calf's born. Our calving starts generally between the 10th and the 15th of April. Calves that are born in mid-April weigh on average about 66 pounds heavier at Roundup than a calf that is born in June 1. So just that short period of time means a tremendous amount of difference on whether that's a, a good looking heavy calf or light calf. We always have light calves. We've had, on average, uh, one to three of uh, these calves that weigh under 200 pounds at Roundup. These calves, and quite often they're even uh, still red at Roundup, meaning that they, the moms missed their cycle and they weren't born until July or August. When a calf is born that late, they are an extreme disadvantage, not only because they're going to get likely cold the next year because it's so light, but they're at a disadvantage uh, of getting through the winter. Uh, smaller calves have a tougher time. So calf weight's one of the most important things, uh, I mean, when it was born uh, on calf weight. The other thing is, is the weight of the mom. Heavier moms, about heavier calves. Now on this end of the scale will be your, like your three and four year old cat, uh, females about light, light calves. doesn't matter whether a male or female, they're going to be about the same weight. As if mom gets heavy on weight, the males respond better over time with weight than the females. The other thing that matters to whether uh, on the calf weight is whether that mom had a calf the year before or not. So here, uh, here's the, uh, did not have, if you didn't have a calf, Versus if you did have a calf, an average 22 pounds difference if she had a calf or not the previous year. And that's why a lot of people have this, this image and say, well, if they on average produce two calves every three years, uh, and that the year after that she don't have a calf, she'll, she will have a really good calf. She's going to have a calf after she has that rest. <coughs> but that's, that's just an anecdotal story. It's not true. About average two years every three, uh, two calves in three years. So calf, uh, calf mass is uh, whether they have the competition for the milk is what's really important on this calf because moms quite often let the last previous year's calf suckle. And some moms will not, they'll kick them off. So, um, the milk is the little one. It's the one that needs it the most. But this guy, this gal is, well, this guy is, is taking milk that 
otherwise would be going to this cat. And then there are the moms who absolutely cannot say no. <laughs> Two year old, one year old, three years old. I guarantee you this cat is at a big disadvantage. Because he ain't getting near the milk he needs. So mom's attitude on how they want to treat their kids is a big deal. Okay, the other thing that uh, affects the, uh, the uh, weight of the calves is the age. Seldom do two-year-olds drop out of calf. Occasionally they do. We've only had five since I've been keeping track of it. There's probably a lot more that get impregnated uh, the first year, but they just cannot carry fetus through the winter. So we've only had uh, five calves, uh, two pumped out of calf as a two-year-old, and they're small calves. Generally, if they pump out a calf as a two-year-old, they don't pump out a calf as a three-year-old. We've had four 19-year-olds, which is old in bison cow. That's an old cow. We've had four of them, and they pump out small calves too. In general, after 10 years, after the cow is 10 years old, the, the, the weight of the calf declines over time. So it's just harder and harder for her to pump out a good calf as she gets older. Best calves come from the four to, to nine year old uh, age group. Okay, I mentioned and we, we have very seldom do we have two year olds calf and they've really got to be heavy in good condition uh, to get through the winter in order to pump out a calf. We like our three year olds to, to pump out a calf. We, we, Save our three-year-olds, the heaviest ones. We expect a calf out of them when they're three-year-olds. Some years we get a calf from almost all of our three-year-olds. Other years we don't. You see, the average is only 61 percent. But they pump out a calf as a, as a three-year-old. They sell pump out a calf as a four-year-old. It just is too big of a draw on the body to pump out a calf when they're this young, two years and low. And that's why the four-year-olds take a big drop down on the calf cup. After that, they get in there and can stop just honking away. <laughs> okay, so I want to mention just a little bit some of the cool things knowing about that. This is my buddy, 358. She's had seven calves in a row, with, starting as a three-year-old, so she went three, four, five every year. And the neat thing about it, every one of those calves were above average. They were basically keepers, and then we didn't keep them all. But they were they were the kind of animals you like, instead of just a cow. There's a big difference between a cow that put a calf out, it's just an average calf, and say, well, that's obvious cold, and a cow that will continually, every year, put out a good calf, good quality calf. 358, that's why she's my buddy, she's a good cow. <laughs> We've had eight cows put out a calf for eight years in a row. We've only had two that did nine years in a row. Blue 803 is gone now, uh, 738 is still in the hood. All time right with 11 years in the And no, none of her calves ever made in the top 10% of the uh, field group. A18, we sold her as an 18, uh, she was at least 18, she may have been older. But, uh, when we sold her, she was pregnant. Really? Uh, so she was, she was a baby machine. Which, uh, if you're selling animals, making money, uh, it's a good thing to have. Going to make it, Jim? Going to make it. I'm going to. <laughs> Even with that interruption you had. <laughs> so people say, okay, they pop out twins. There's been reports of, of bison that's been in well-managed, well-fed hoods that's popped out twins. But it ain't going to happen under the conditions that we force all animals to live under. Conditions we force all animals to live under, it's tough. And they just are not going to have the body reserves to carry two cats. And no, my mom's standing right here. <laughs>